First time out in the light in 31 years. My math right? 91 was it? Oh, he took a good hit in the nose, huh? It's like the whole nose is bent down. Not even that big 70s bumper. The turds really make it, I think. <laughs> hey guys, and how's it going? Hey, we're gonna continue on this 1973-ish Carmen Ghia that Jason and I dragged out of a barn uh, about two weeks ago. Anyway, uh, it is in very sad shape, as you could tell, but again, the price is right. Uh, we're gonna go try to do an assessment on what we have, possibly do a will it run. The engine is locked up, so that may be uh, totally toast. I don't know. Raccoons have had their way with it over the last 32 years. 91, I think, was the sticker that is on it. So there's not much left on the insides that the raccoons haven't crapped on or decided to eat. It does not have keys and it has locking steering. Yes, so it's fun getting it on the trailer and it'll be more fun trying to get it off and hopefully onto our lift. I've done my best with trying to line it up and back it up. So that's gonna be the first thing on the agenda is see how we can get that on here so we can start wrenching. Without further ado, let's get into it. <laughs> Although it kind of rolled onto the trailer, kind of. We dragged it on. It's gonna wanna fight us a little bit. But we could fix that. We'll try to give it some gravity. And we'll tilt the trailer up. Oh, it'll go. That wasn't so bad, now was it? Need a little bit of angle. All right, let's see what we got. The front beam looks okay. It's got disc brake front end, which is desirable. Sometimes they get put in beetles. I don't see any blowouts. Usually right here is where they rot. This is all junk. It looks like the floors rotted out. Somebody replaced them because there's no ribs in it. And then it rotted out again. <laughs> Convertibles, you know. Yeah, it looks a good idea if, uh, if you can see the lights of your shop through the bottom of the car. Is that a bad sign? What I'm mostly interested in is the transmission and the engine. If either one of those is any good, it actually looks like it, I shouldn't say it ahead of time, the heater boxes, which are usually blown out, they actually look fairly decent. A little mud wash right here. 
Like I said, the, by hand, we checked real quick and the engine did not turn. It is a 1600 single port, we believe, which this car would have had a dual port being what it is, 73 or 74, right around there. And the body's pretty crunchy. It's like somebody made metal here. That doesn't look like it's factory folded seams there. It's like somebody's trying to wrap that quarter. Maybe, maybe not. It's about to be, actually it's better than I thought it would be. I thought all this would be really, yeah, it's all gone. Yeah, it's a, there's nothing left but uh, walnuts popping out of it. <laughs> we could probably put the floor back in. Good. <laughs> All right, let's go to the uh, ass end of it and we'll see what we can do. The factory jack is in place. <laughs> and we'll see, put a wrench on the bottom crank and see if we can get any kind of turning out of it. I guess we're gonna start by getting the air cleaner out of our way. Gotta be careful I don't knock this stick out. It's holding the deck lid up. Somebody actually tighten that? There we go. That way. Because I only have an adjustable big enough. And if I go to punch it, when I slip, I don't punch the air cleaner. You know what I'm talking about, right? I'm pretty good at this, too. There we go. All right, we tried doing this. We weren't getting anything. Let's go. You know, we can always oil the cylinders and everything too, but generally they stay pretty good. Speaking. Are we? That's just been not turning. And nothing says this thing wasn't parked for blowing up an engine too, you know? We are getting nothing. Um, let's go pop a valve cover off underneath it. Take a peek at what that looks like. Give us a general assessment. If we pull that off and it's all wet and like rusty, then we know it's pretty much junk. I run to the driver's side valve cover. And usually if an engine fails, it'll drop number three valve, number three cylinder. Bar has sagged down around the valve cover. It doesn't give it enough room. Oil's coming out. That's a good sign. <laughs> no, that's not normal. But first glance, it doesn't look terrible. It doesn't look too bad. Like I said, sometimes so it did not drop number three exhaust valve. It has play. If the valve had broken, which is the most common one, there wouldn't be any play in here. You would take this rocker assembly off, that valve stem would want to come all the way out. It did not do that. So, so far, we're not looking terrible. I'm wondering what we can do to get the plugs out of it and try to get some oil in it. Let's go pop the one off the other side. See if we see anything over there. So it looks like it might have a little bit more room. The gasket's hanging down now. The engine seal. Yeah, let me get this one out. And he's not seeing any corrosion or moisture on this side neither. Which is all quite dandy, huh? Yeah. Nice. 
It doesn't look like it's, it, you know, it's got wear on it as far as like the, the buildup of crap, but it's not terrible. It's what you would expect to find. Good. Let's go drop it back down again. Let's go check and see what we got for oil in it and all that kind of stuff. And uh, we'll see what we can do about getting the plugs out of it and trying to get some juice in there. See if we can get them to spray up and rock back and forth. Some Carmen Gears, the uh, engine lid has holes in it, breather holes, and water can get in. This had the air cleaner on it too, so looks like it's full of oil. Dirty, but it's full of oil. Uh, yeah, it's not the generator's turning, so it's, that's not much of an issue. Let's get the breastplate. This is this thing down here. It's called the breastplate. Let's get this out of the way. Then we should be able to get a socket on here to be able to give a little bit more uh, torque on it back and forth. And uh, a breaker bar. These just sit in here. There's not much holding them. Those are air tubes is a big fan and it blows air through here down in through the heater boxes when the heater boxes are turned on it gives you heat there's a bunch of screws they are Phillips screws which are not factory <laughs> that's been a part I'm sure several times I'm gonna get all the screws out we'll get this tin out of our way and we'll get a brake bar on it should be all the screws yeah a little bit more elbow room. A couple of sticks. Let's see if we can get a socket on that. Instead of guessing whether we got it to move or not, let's go give her a little right in the center of that. Alright. I don't think this is doing much. Alright, let's see. We can get a good spot where I'm not going to punch something. It's just tightening the nut. I'll keep going on that a little bit. Yeah. I don't think we're getting anywhere. Let's go back and forth. It's not doing a thing. Next is the plugs. One of the problems with air cooled VWs is there's this is a tin where this plug goes. There's an airspace. Go poke my finger around in there, and a lot of times like mice and stuff get up inside there, and they make it so that you go to take the plug out. All the crap wants to fall in because it's just you know there's airspace in between. That actually doesn't feel too bad. Let's get those two out. If we see a plug that's got a bunch of rust on it, that's going to be the cylinder. <laughs> Hopefully it's not all the cylinders or any of the cylinders. It's number two cylinder. It actually came out fairly easy too. It wasn't, um, sometimes you crack them loose and they're like taking the threads with it. I wouldn't say that looks terrible. any further I'm gonna take an air gun I want to blow all the crap out of both sides of these just so I'm not pushing all that crap you can see all the stuff that's built up down here and get rid of some of that actually I ended up putting that plug back in right the socket still on it Let's get number one out of there. Okay. 
Yeah, it's got some white on it, but no real rust. I'm not sure that that white might be a little bit of a powder corrosion. We'll keep an eye on that one. So far, I would say if anything, that's the cylinder. Let's get the last two out. Number three it feels a little gooey. If that's a word. Poor spark plug. Kind of came out not chalky, but the threads were a little iffy. You can actually kind of even see it on the threads. That has. I think that's just a hit from us taking it out. So far, still number one looks like our our worst one. We've got one more to go. None of the plugs are tight. They just that's probably the tightest one. Yeah, this one's got some drag on it too coming out. Sometimes what happens, especially when they sit for a long time or the plugs aren't changed for a long time. The steel of the threads and aluminum of the head try to become one. So you end up, you get the plug out and then you got to put a new one in, but you don't have all the threads there and it has that kind of feel to it. So we'll kind of keep an eye on number three if we get the engine going. We may have to put a helicoil on that one. And number four. That one's got a lot of carbon on it. I definitely wouldn't say got an issue so let's go line them up you can definitely see the driver's side there's more carbon on it than number one and number two let's go throw some oil inside I don't think I can get in there with a scope I may try yeah, I went to go probe it with the camera and of course it worked for about 30 seconds and the battery <laughs> flashed and, and shut off and went dead. I threw it back on the charger. I did see like a little bit of white corrosion, not a ton of it. I also didn't get a very good view of it neither. Uh, I'd say we try getting some spray of some sort, like automatic transmission or something. We'll squirt that in some of the cylinders and maybe we'll let that sit a little bit. The only problem with this style of engine, like if you have an engine that's straight up, you put oil in it and it, it kind of goes around the rings. Well, the cylinder is sitting like this in the piston. So when you put the oil in it, it's only getting on that little bit of the bottom. But generally, um, that's kind of where the, the damages would be on that little bit of the valley on the bottom right there. So let me go squirt some in there. We'll let that be on the charger. And I'm kind of wondering if we could put power to the starter and give her like a bump to try to break it loose, but that's getting ahead of ourselves. I gotta go change the transmission fluid on the Toyota. And they're a little tricky to get to, so it has this little hose set up and a pump. We're gonna leave all that set right up, and hopefully that'll work for us. Hose is kind of stiff. I'm just gonna run that in there and give her a Anything coming out of that? Yep. I'm gonna run around and do all those cylinders. I'll bring you back. Well, between the four cylinders, there's about a quart of oil in all of them. I gotta go put this to the other side. I'm gonna eat it. There's nothing saying that this, you know, this crank could be totally blown up too. One thing that does give it a little bit of a, I don't know what I call it, a gear ratio, is the starter to the flywheel. I think I'm to the point where I want to try maybe bumping a little bit of power to the starter. And we'll see if we can get a, the bang on it to try to break it loose if i had time I'd, I'd let it sit for a while but for the sake of video uh, i do not want to come back this to this like a couple of days later and, and try it i got the oil kind of squirted around all the way too it has to kind of like soak into the rings over time i could have been why this part too though yeah, again i'm starting to question maybe the bottom end is uh seized up and then they put oil in it <laughs> <laughs> will be the first time of, uh, I've had an engine that uh, was locked up and was full of oil because after the, it makes funny noises then they check the oil and put oil in it. Alright, let's go take a peek at the starter. Why not even see if it's any good. So I'm putting on 
in the air to put the the uh, starter button on the starter and I see it's dripping automatic transmission fluid from number four cylinder. Uh, sometimes they get what's called blow by, but generally that'll be right here, not up there. So I'm not quite sure what is happening. Maybe I missed the hole and <laughs> she's dripping a little bit or something's cracked and or busted up in there and that may be where our issue is, hard to say. But we're gonna try getting to that starter, which is up back there. I'm gonna try getting this hose out of our way. Possibly even this tire. Uh, we got power to it. We don't have a key, that's the problem. So it's kind of like I, not like I can put a battery in it, go to the key and go crank it. We don't have that capacity. So what we have is a starter button, like that. And it just has two leads and you put 12 volts to one side of it and, and uh, there's a signal wire that goes to the other side of the starter up in there. And let's go see if we can see it. Yeah, right there, we should get on that. So you see that little red wire is up top right there? So that's we're gonna put one lead to it. And uh, that actually should have 12 volts on it right now. If we cross those two, it should try to pop a little bit. I'm gonna put the car up a little bit higher. Maybe we'll just try bumping it with a screwdriver. Yeah, see if we get that heater tube. <laughs> Somebody's living in there. <laughs> it was. There we go. we're doing it so we want to cross is that wire broke off that wire is broken right off so let's go see if we get any kind of spark between these two if this thing turns hope you have a dirty shirt on because it's going to piss oil on us yeah. uh, starters going and engaging and it's, it's just hitting a wall Go. I'm gonna. Ah. <laughs> All right, we got a rubber. Let's go put the jumper wire on it, and we'll go up top. And we'll take a peek. I think we got it. I'm not saying it's gonna make it all the way around, but I think it broke loose, or we broke something. <laughs> nice. And you know, all that oil is going to want to piss out of those cylinders. We're just getting our wires ready. So we actually only need to get on that one if we can. And then we can get on the other one up by the battery pack. I got to go fix that end. The little end is not closing up. Or we swap them. How's this one? That one looks better, that one looks better. And then we'll put the other one on the big side. You can actually just take the wire right off and put it on the post if you wanted to too. All right, let's go drop the car again. Bring our little jumper wire set up, up top with us. Yeah, it's pitching trans fluid out right now, good. Oh, this side is dripping. I'm gonna go get a pan underneath there because both sides of that thing, when it goes, it's gonna <laughs> make a mess. I don't know if you could see all the little droplets of oil <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> it made it. It already made it 15 feet. Well, it's definitely moved. That's a good sign, huh? And judging by the mess that's over there, that's the first one that shot out all its oil. These still look pretty dry. I think probably what we should do, uh, so it doesn't like explode out of each side, let's go put the ratchet back on it and we'll crank it through. Well, we could also feel too if anything's binding like a valve's hanging up or something, we're hitting it, that we don't like totally trash it. So let's get set up and get a ratchet instead of the breaker bar. All right, you feel like you're back far enough out of harm's way? I'm psyched that it turned. See how it feels though? Yeah, right there it's hitting. Go back. You can feel where it broke. Yeah. So it's hitting something right there. That 
That's like a valve, like popping and letting go. Or there's a, like a bunch of crap on a, where the a ring is going over. That clacking is not great though. Get it past that one. So if it's probably the same cylinder that might have some crap on it. So when it's going to top dead center, it's hitting it. That's right where it was stopped too. So there could be there it goes, went all the way around. Any more force than that, you can worry about like bending valves and stuff. There it goes. Yeah, it's right on top of that center. There's a bunch of crud. I just backed that nut off now. Get on the other way. I say go for broke no pun intended let's go get the other wire for the uh, jumper button and we'll try running it through and see what we get here we go hopefully so a little bit like a rod knock huh let it spin for a little bit quieter. That could have been why it was parked too again. It wouldn't knock just from sitting and then us breaking it loose like we did. I'm trying to let it spin a little bit, see if we can get like oil pressure built up. Let's go get a test light and we're going to hook it to the oil pressure switch. We're going to see if we can get the light to go out. It should be lit when there's uh, no pressure and then if it builds pressure, the light should go out. All right, so that test light is on and what that means is the oil pressure switch is allowing to go to ground. There's no pressure there. As it builds pressure inside the switch, it kind of opens up and it opens the circuit. So let's see what we get if it goes out. There we go. So it is building oil pressure. That clacking. You let it spin for a little bit. I'm surprised it hasn't shot a bunch of oil out of the cylinders. Seems like it builds oil pressure pretty good too. In the in the light, like when I let off, it takes a second to go away, and that's kind of an indication that. The oil pressure in the engine is not leaking out of somewhere. Like if it had a bad rod, if that was the case, like as soon as you let off, and it also probably wouldn't even build oil pressure at, a, at an idle like it is. take a peek at the valves and see if there is a valve that is, is clacking. I'm also going to turn it by hand and see if we have, yeah, right there, whatever that is, right? We could have a valve that's sticking and we're going around and it's just kind of binding. So let's go flip it up in the air. We'll bring this down with us and uh, we'll spin it. We'll take a look at the valves. We'll see if a valve is like slow to return. That might be what the noise is too. All right, let's go look at this side here. Nah. That one's 
good. I'd be able to feel the valve break away from the push rod, the rocker rather. Yeah, it's nothing on that side. It definitely sounds like it's coming from internals on it. <laughs> I think we might have found why it got parked. It wasn't rust. Let's go check the other side real quick. What's weird though is that it has oil pressure. That's really got me. Puzzling it is. Well, I don't think that's gonna stop us from trying to get it to run. <laughs> that should just be a little on the noisy side. I do see it's pushing oil out of the uh, rockers, so. While I'm down here, I guess we could shove the valve covers on because you know, really not much to deal with in there. There we go. Definitely gonna need a screwdriver for that one. Well, I figure for shits and giggles, why don't we try doing a compression test and see if we get anything. I got the carb open a little bit, get some air in it. It's the number one cylinder. Battery's going low on me. It's saying 50, but it's spinning slow. We'll run around, we'll check all four. If we get a cylinder that's dead, we'll kind of like maybe send a scope down there, see if we see anything. It, d it definitely sounds like it's coming from the middle though. There also could be, you know, just on the off chance, like there's a finger broke on the clutch that's clacking as it goes around. Who knows? Like I said, generally you don't have oil pressure if um, you have something that's internally gone. But we'll see. That one's kicking. Set you up on the other side. So number three is notoriously the bad one. <laughs> well, it's got something. It's kicking a little bit. It's, it's creeping up there. Again, until this thing runs, like I, I do expect the numbers to be low. You got to run it a little bit because th the crap builds up around the, the, the sides of the valves. And until it runs and has a little, get a little bit of heat in it, the valves will kind of slap against the seat and they will seat themselves. And the numbers will come up. And same with the rings, too. The rings will kind of. Get a little bit of temperature in and free himself up. Let's see how we're doing. Number four. Get it in the hole. Okay. Yeah, that one's got it too. <laughs> Shuts and giggles. Let's go pop. Make sure the rotor's turning. Make sure it didn't take out the uh, front drive. Nope, that looks good. And one last shits and giggles. Let's go take the belt off of it and make sure there's not anything with the alternator and the fan in the back that's making noise. V-dubs get kind of a weird pulley setup. They have uh, shims. You can't adjust the generator or alternator like on an American car. It's in a fixed location. And the reason why it's in a fixed location is because on the other side of it is a big fan. That's why it's air cooled. So you have shims that you move from inside to outside. There's those shims, just spin it. Nah, it's pretty quiet. It's not that. Belts off of it. Yeah. Well, the other thing I could think of is, let's take a quick look at the clutch pedal. We'll see if somebody pushed down on it and it's stuck. Nah, it's looking pretty normal. But it moves or not, I don't want to push my luck. 
turn the light off. Hold on. I'll get you there. Hold on. <laughs> there we go. Feels normal. It's in neutral. It's not like the trans is spinning. Yeah. Nice interior, huh? <laughs> no raccoons were uh, living in here. Oh. What do you think that is? I don't want to know either. It smells like it looks. Let's take out for a radio. Sparkomatic, realistic. Radio Shack. How many miles are on it? It says 47, but we know it's got a different engine in it, so uh, I would guess 147. We're going to take a few minutes. I'm going to go put some stuff back together, put the plugs back in it, and uh, we'll take a look at those points, probably run a file across those. And then we'll run a hot lead to the coil, and we'll see if we get some spark going. We get some spark going, we'll dump a little fuel in it, and uh, see if she'll... Uh, run and possibly cure itself. I'm kind of thinking maybe a, a lifter. Generally a lifter doesn't hang up on these. Uh, it's not a, not a common thing, but you know, it's the first time for everything, right? Now that we're in focus now, look at those points. See all the white crap growing on them right there. That would never have spark. So I'm going to go take a little bit. We'll, we'll drag a uh, points file across those and get rid of those stalactites. Put some power to it, see if we get spark. So that should be at 16 thou, which I don't think it is. It's going. And then a little bit of a douching. You can see it coming off on the stick too. All the crap that's on there. I may have a little bit too much light on you. Kind of like Blinding you out. I'm gonna take some uh, brake clean. I'll shoot a little on there. Oh, yeah. Guess we're getting air. <laughs> I'm gonna go. Uh, I think that needs a little bit more love. I'm gonna work on that a little bit more. Like I said earlier, you don't have a key. So we're going to run a jumper to the coil. So the coil, one side's hot and one side is the point signal, which is more of a ground. So the green wire is that one. I know that one comes from the points. And then this is going to go directly to power. And you can hear the solenoid. Hopefully you can hear the solenoid. The solenoid is the inside the carburetor clicking. Let's go look at that spark plug right there. And we'll see if we can spark when we crank it. I don't see any yet. Let's hold her up. No, no spark. Yep, there it goes. Took a second. It must be shy. <laughs> Try it again. Good. Let's go slap them plugs back in it. Dribble a little bit of fuel on the top of it and see what we get. Remember I was saying number three was kind of loose coming out? Yeah, you go to run it in. You just keep spinning it with your hand. You don't even put a ratchet on it. All the threads are gone on that cylinder. I'm kind of wondering if maybe somebody tried to do a repair because all the plugs are new looking. I wonder if somebody tried doing a repair, put a helicoil in there, maybe dropped something down inside that cylinder and gave up. But I can't get a plug to stay. I may try... Um, now again, if we take the engine out, we can get a helicoil in there to go fix that. I'm trying to figure out if we could do something now just to kind of like temporary hold, temporarily hold it. I may try to find a plug that has a, uh, a little bit longer thread. Actually, maybe we could take off the uh, compression part of the plug. Just gives a little bit. Just try to let it so it holds in there. Yeah, see if that'll work for us. If not, I'll try to get a longer plug. Yeah, it's afraid of that. All right, that is holding in there by like one thread. Let's see if it'll blow the plug away. It might, as soon as it cranks, blow it right out. No. All right, let's go put power to it. Put some fuel on it. So that right there on the carb is called the horn. And that'll allow me to fill the full pull up. 
and I doubt there's any gas going to be flowing up through that fuel filter, but we'll give her enough that if the carb has any kind of life to it, it'll start to run with it. If not, we'll run off the squirt bottle. We'll fill that up. I'm going to refill my bottle and we'll be ready to go. Can you see? Hope so. Let's go put power. Coil. You got a click and it will give her a little. I think the hazard lights are coming on. Hazard lights are opposite what they should. That's <laughs> yeah, going to give her a little. For that, let's see what we get. Run it. I think we're going to need a more of a battery though. Jumper pack just not enough. Let's go give her another little squirt. We'll give her a shot. If not, we'll regroup with a battery. Smoke out of something. Right. Let me go get something that will spin it over a little bit faster. I think we're just kind of cranking a little too slow. Alright, we got a partly dead battery. Hooked up to a partly dead jumper pack. Should make it mostly alive. Power back to the coil. Super. Pump and smoke. The other thing too is like all the oil we put in there, it's not good to kind of foul the plugs out and it's trying to, you know, fire off the of oil too. So I'm going to go take the battery charger, hook it up to that. We're going to let her sit for about 15, 20 minutes. Uh, we'll try it again. If we don't get it to go after that, plus compression is kind of building up too. You know, you need one cylinder that was higher. I think one of them was a hundred. Was it number two? Had a hundred pounds on it. We'll kind of let that once you get one, the fire and it starts firing. Then the other one start building a little compression. They start adding to the pile and, uh, Hopefully she takes off. All right, let me go get that battery charger on there and let that buzz for a little while. It's going on the float ball, move it down it.
<laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, we'll let it cool down again. Getting there. Again, the more it spins, the more the compression starts to come up in the cylinders. We'll try it maybe one or two more times. We don't get it. I'm going to pull the plugs back out, dry them all up, except for the one plug that's screwed in the corner. I'm not going to touch that one. And while we're waiting, I took a number one and number two plug out. You can see how wet they are. I'm going to take a little bit, clean them up, dry them out, and we'll little break clean. I'll put them back in. Let's tell the battery charger to peg it. Put it on boost. Loosen up the distributor. Again, we don't know if it was running when it was parked and it could have been getting screwed with, especially with the new plugs and the one plug being stripped out of it and the noise that somebody was trying to screw with it to try to get it to do what it's supposed to do. So I'm gonna go mark the distributor where it is and then we'll, we'll kind of move it, favor it one way or a little. Sometimes, it, even though it'll be off on timing, it just kind of helps to get it to, to start. Let's go loosen that distributor up. It's marked. that power to it fuel <laughs> right <in> the balls <laughs> I think you did. <laughs> Alright, let's go the other way. Gotta snug it up a little. It's a little too loose. If she doesn't go, it's the last time for tonight. We'll give her a shot, and then we'll call it. Uh, let's try it with no fuel. Let's go. Can we put the timing back closer to where it was? So close to God. 
going. set up. I'm going to go quite a bit. You know, if not, I'm going to let it set up overnight, let the plugs dry out, and we'll, we'll give her a shot in the morning. Put that timing. We're almost out of fuel. But let's um, bump that timing back where it was. that for a little bit I get it I think this engine is kind of terminal whatever's cooking on the inside of it is pretty much gone I don't know if it's a rod knock with a cam <laughs> she's a peach what do you mean she runs fine all right I'll let that charge up one more time I'm gonna refuel my bottle see if we can get anything more out of it but I guess we're gonna go call that a success as far as uh, will it run kind of sort of <laughs> 
<laughs> ah, she's a peach. Let's get you up a little closer. <laughs> Still laughing at it, trying to set me on fire. Typical leaf distributor where it is. Generally, it's, it's, it's even. Ah, what the hell? Generally, it's a little bit even more forward. It's almost like it should be like that. See what we get on that. See the noise? I almost sounded like it started to clear up a little bit, didn't it? Yeah, they had the timing way out. That's why I was never going to start. Gonna go away. I don't think so. Let's try filling the carb up. We'll see if it'll run on the carb. I'm sure it has no accelerator pump. That's what gives it the little squirt. But if the main jet's open, it, it should kind of run off of it. It's running on all four. It's gonna run out of gas in a minute. That's all the oil coming out. <laughs> it lives. It's running out of gas now. Oh, that poor noise, though, huh? I don't think I sucked that in. I'm gonna go re gas up. We'll fire it up one more time. <laughs> yeah, we'll fill up the horn. But again, that just goes right into the float bowl. It should probably take about half the bottle, at least. If we hooked up fuel to it. It'd probably stay running like a regular tank. You got an ox, huh? I have a, a car that can use this engine. I want to use the transmission too, but that's for another day. What are we doing? We need a start button. Hopefully it's not melting to the lean on the exhaust to burn the wires. Alright, can we go? We'll start without us touching it. Yes.
Alright, let's enjoy. Then it kind of goes away. Use it to idle more. No, I don't like that. We're running it at the RPM where it's not as noisy. Or <laughs> that guy's gonna run down. There's a car in there somewhere. <laughs> Reminds me of an animal house when they cut the cake. That sounds awful. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, with that, although it's a failure, I, I, I'm going to call it success on one side and a failure on the other. We got to run, but I think she's just a poor engine. At some point, we may tear it down and try to find out what that noise is. My guess, it's either camshaft or it's just a rod that's knocking. My, uh, it it kind of sounds like a rod knock to me, but again, yeah, you know, just kind of guessing. Hear a little sizzling going on. Make sure my wires aren't getting burned on the exhaust. All right, guys. <laughs> Hope you had some fun. I did. It's uh, entertaining to try to bring old junk like this back to life after sitting for how long. You never know what the history of it was. Again, somebody tried screwing with it. Stripped out the plug. The distributor was about 30 degrees off trying to get it to run. And I think we just kind of gave up at that point. What the knock is, eh, you're welcome to try to comment on it. but. Uh, I think that was the terminal uh, thing that they parked it for. Maybe they tried uh, moving the timing to get, like the noise will kind of go away. Like, so if you got a rod knock, that's what they're shooting at us. Um, you get a rod knock, you can kind of like influence, you, if you bump timing out of it, it doesn't whack on the piston as hard like from, uh, trying to think the best way to explain it. It's just a smoother transition for the piston. And that's what it is. If the piston's going up, changing direction, and going back the other way, when it changes that direction and it fires, that's where the clack comes from. And then the same on the other side, on the bottom end, when it goes this direction and goes back to go the other way, whether, whatever play is in the rod, the bearings on the, you know, on the outside and the cranks on the middle, that, that little bit of play, that's the knock on each side. Top dead center and bottom dead center is, is where you hear the bang. Well, if you bump the distributor a little bit, you kind of like influence and get rid of that noise. I'm guessing that's what they tried to do to get rid of it. But, you know, it's funny that it has oil pressure. We should see if it has oil pressure now. Let's go fire it up one more time. We'll put a test light on it and we'll see if the oil pressure now that oil's warm, if it kind of comes on and off at, at an idle. All right, we're looking at that light. That light should stay off the whole time it's running. An idle has no oil pressure. What happens is the oil gets so thin that um, 
it now leaks around the bearing that, that's failing. Yes. That light should not be on. It'll go away if I rev it up a little bit. But that shouldn't be doing that right now. Alright, it's cool. Yeah, that kind of confirms it. When it's cold, the oil's real thick, so it will, uh, the oil light will go out. There's a, a gap between, uh, my guess is the rod, I can see one of the rods are gone. And um, the oil is trying to escape there. When it's real thick, it's hard to escape. As the engine warms up, the oil thins out, it escapes much easier, and then the oil pressure drops down at an idle. That, that pretty much is uh, assigned fate. <laughs> Got a lot of good parts on it though still. There's a lot of stuff. You know, all the tins and everything look decent, which a lot of times it's hard to find good sheet metal components that aren't all rotted out and heater boxes are all rotted out. So unfortunately the bottom end is shit, but um, you know, we can take the cylinder heads and all that kind of thing and tins and generator and carb and coil and all the little bits off of it. What do you want for nothing, right? <laughs> Alright guys, now we're calling it. Let's just place air out a little bit. And then I'm gonna go shut the door. But for this one, that's it. We're done. Promise. Till the next one. I'll see you. Bye.